Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern OpenGL C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at triangles again, but this time adding multiple attributes to our triangle. That is, we're going to be using multiple vertex buffer objects to create a triangle that now has multiple colors on it. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look here. So just to give you an idea of our project structure, in case you're just joining us and haven't been following along with the series, we've got our shaders in a different file, which we're going to be loading and running at runtime here. So you can see our vertex and our fragment shader needed in our pipeline, and then our main source file here, which we're going to be modifying. So let's go ahead and jump into that here. Now, what I want to go ahead and do here is just take a quick look at our main function, which is how I've structured our graphics programs. Again, the initialization, setting up your SDL2 or whatever window that you're using, uh, the vertex specification, which is responsible for creating our geometry, and then creating the graphics pipeline, which ultimately tells us how we do every draw call in our program. And then finally, the main application loop, which is what's running over and over and over again, and then any cleanup that we have to do. So where I want to focus today is on the actual vertex specification, and then we'll modify some of the shaders to get multiple attributes. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, jump into our uh, vertex specification here. So in this function here, if we go ahead and take a look, you'll remember that we first create the vertex positions. So that is to say that every um, triangle here, which in this case we just have one, has some x, y, and z position associated with it. So x, y, z, x, y, z, and x, y, z. And we can label these and so on. Um, and we ultimately get our triangle here. But these are the attributes that we have in our particular triangle. Now, what I want to do today is add different attributes for color. So for instance, from each of these vertices, we'll have a different color that'll get interpolated and sort of blend together uh, to make our final triangle here. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, first, let's just go ahead and review the mechanism that we had uh, previously which we had our vertex array here. Okay, so what was our vertex array object or our uh, VAO? Well, again, that was our specification and it's essentially this array that says, what attributes do we have? So for instance, in the uh, zeroth position here, I'll just put zeroth position, we have, well, position data. And that was the X, Y, and Z of each of our vertices. And again, that information is being read from, well, this uh, vector here I have called vertex positions. Okay, so that was the idea here of our vertex array object. So I generated that here. Um, we can see that we're binding to it to mean that, yes, this is the active vertex array object that we want to work with. And then we had our actual buffer data here, which stored those vertex positions. So again, what we have here is, well, when we create our vertex uh, array object, we generate a buffer. So that is all of our X, Y, and Z positions here. I'm just going to label them, you know, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, etc. for however many triangles you have here. And this was a vertex buffer object number one here. Okay, so if I scroll down just a little bit more in our code, you'll see that then I enable a vertex a trib array uh, here for index zero. So again, that was this zero index here. And that's where the actual linking happens, where I say, okay, we want for all of our triangles, we want to link these things together here. So we enable the attribute and then we specify what kind of data lives inside of this vertex buffer object, uh, essentially having three vertices here. So our goal today, or what I'm going to do, is set up another vertex buffer object here. So VBO number two, and it's going to store RGB data, red, green, and blue colors for each of the vertices. So that's R, G, and B. And then we'll have our color here at the you know first index, and then I'll link it up here. So anyone uh, or any person who's using this graphics framework, who's using this vertex array object, is now going to expect to be using both position and color data. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and modify our vertex specification here. And of course, we're going to need some colors. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this uh, vertex positions vector here. And I'm just going to call it vertex uh, colors here. So vertex colors. And these have to be in a range between uh, 
0, 0, 0.0 and 1. So let's just go ahead and uh, make everything 0 to start, just to clean things up a little bit. And that seems pretty reasonable. And just to make this somewhat interesting, I'm going to make the first uh, vertex position, the one at the left here, uh, a red color. The next one's going to be blue, and the next one's going to be green. Okay, so now we have our actual vertex colors here. And again, this is setting up, or we're getting ready to set up vertex buffer object number two here. Okay, now let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. And we're essentially going to copy the same pattern that we had before here for creating this uh, vertex buffer object here. Uh, so what's that going to mean? Well, we're going to need to have some other handle to this vertex buffer uh, object here. So let's go ahead and scroll to the top. And I know globals are evil, but they make things uh, easy. So let's just go ahead and create vertex buffer object number two. And let's go ahead and jump down to uh, where we were. Oops, here we go. Oh, back to our vertex uh, specification here. Sorry for the scroll. Here we are. OK. Um, and now let's just go ahead and essentially do the same thing here. So I'm going to do uh, GL gen buffers, GL bind, and then uh, set up our data here. OK. Now, um, there's multiple ways that I could uh, go about doing this. And uh, I'm going to take a sort of simpler approach here. Um, actually, one way to do this, I'm just going to split our window here um, so I can see on both sides and essentially just copy this process here again for our uh, vertex buffer uh, object here okay so let's go ahead and do this um, and i'll actually do this um, well below the uh, where we set up our other uh, attribute here just to make it a little bit uh, easier here okay so let's go ahead uh, how about right here okay so i'm gonna do uh, gl gen buffers now, I could do this in uh, two steps if I wanted, um, or um, I could actually, uh, since the first parameter of glgen buffers is how many I wanted to create, I'm just creating one here uh, for our second uh, vertex buffer object. I could actually pass this in as a, an array and generate uh, two buffers here. That would be another way uh, to do this. We're going to look at multiple uh, strategies uh, here. OK, and then I want to uh, bind to this buffer uh, that I've just created here vertex buffer object number two, and then start populating it with the data here. So GL buffer data. And again, this is a GL array buffer. And then we have our arguments uh, that we need to uh, add here. Now, again, if we go ahead and scroll down here, uh, what are the actual uh, attributes here that we need? Well, we need to know what type of buffer we're working with the number of bytes that we have, where that data is coming from, and a hint to OpenGL of how we're going to use that data here. OK, so let's just go ahead and add that here. It's going to look uh, almost identical, except this time we're going to use the vertex uh, colors here, the size of that vector times the size of uh, each of the elements in that vector. That'll give us the number of bytes, the vertex colors data, and we're not going to be changing this data, so it's going to be GL static draw. OK, so this will essentially generate our second uh, buffer here. And now what we need to do is, again, do something very similar, where we enable another attribute array here, uh, just like our previous code. So let me go ahead and just scroll down here. And we're essentially going to be doing the same exact thing here. OK, so let's go ahead and just scroll down here. and. Um, this is where I'll actually want to, let me actually just separate out this code. So I want to make sure when we bind to the buffer and set up everything, um, we just do all these steps uh, at once here. Okay, so this is setting up our colors. Now linking up the attributes in our BAO. Okay, uh, so GL enable vertex attrib array, but this time the uh, first index, and then setting up the pointer to that uh, particular data here. So VX attrib pointer, and this is attribute number one. We're going to have three components, this time being R, G, and B. 
Uh, the type of these components still remain float. GL false. Uh, I'm not going to assume the data is normalized. Uh, the stride, there's no, um, the data is packed together. Uh, and there's no offset from the actual uh, start of the data. Okay, so then let me go ahead and just close this. And now we've set up this attribute here. Now, um, I'm going to want to also uh, make sure to disable this attribute. Uh, we just don't want to uh, leave them open here. Okay, so now I've got those closed off here. Uh, so now let me just go ahead and close this window so you can see it all on one screen a little bit easier. This is essentially what we've set up here for setting up our colors. We've created a new buffer here, and now we are linking in that attribute. So it's not really that many lines of code here. And then we essentially uh, just created some data here. Now, if I go ahead and let's go ahead and give this a compile just to see if I've made any mistakes here. Uh, one mistake at line 269 here. Uh, looks like I have introduced one extraneous uh, semicolon there. So let's get rid of that here so the list initializer can work. Um, and let's actually go ahead and run this and just see what happens here if I run this code here. Um, now, if you followed along with the last lesson, I left it off as a red triangle, and this is essentially what we're getting. So I'm not seeing the actual color attributes here. So this is where we're actually going to have to go into our uh, shaders here. So let me go ahead and split this window here. Let's open up our shaders. Uh, let's open up the vertex shader, and let's split this again to have our fragment shader open as well. Now, where we're actually going to have to do the work is in our vertex shader here. And I want to go ahead and just give you a little bit of guidance here. Um, by looking at uh, the how we're going to set this up here. So in OpenGL, we have something known as a layout qualifier. And again, you can kind of think about or remember layout as we're laying out or specifying the actual vertex data here. So inside of our fragment, uh, or both our fragment, but uh, in this particular case, uh, where we care is in our vertex shader, the actual uh, vertex data. And we have to tell OpenGL, well, where are the actual uh, position data and where is the actual uh, color data here? Because you'll notice last time I sort of got away with uh, this cheat here of just taking in a bunch of uh, position data here. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is uh, fix this here. And this time, since we have multiple attributes, if we don't uh, do this sort of layout specifier, OpenGL will try to guess, but it might not get things right, uh, depending on what your assumptions are. Um, so inside our vertex shader, and again, make sure you're working on the uh, vertex shader. Uh, let me go ahead and just get rid of uh, that position there. Uh, and I'm going to specify with the layout here, location equals zero. And then our input, uh, really, we just have three things uh, are position here. So I'll actually get rid of this uh, last position value here, position W, and just put in 1.0 F here. Okay. And then um, let's go ahead and add our second layout qualifier here, which is going to be the uh, colors here. And let's just call these vertex uh, colors. Okay, so now we have our two uh, attributes. So let's go ahead and run this and see if we get any further here, or at least check for compilation errors. So um, again, I only made changes to the uh, program, so I didn't really have to run anything. But again, uh, nothing quite yet. Well, why nothing? Well, that's because we're working in the uh, fragment shader. That's where we actually get the different colors. Okay, so what we have to do inside of our vertex shader now is go ahead and say, hey, we're bringing in our input, but we want to send out to the next stage of the pipeline. And it's going to be a VEC3. And I'll just call it uh, vertex. Um, or let me actually give it a sort of underscore vertex colors. Sometimes you'll, you'll see these conventions where you use a V underscore if it's coming from the um, vertex pipeline here. OK, so what this is going to do is pass from the vertex shader into the fragment shader some colors here. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, take in now in our fragment shader. So what's coming in? Well, it's a VEC3 and it is the uh, vertex colors here. OK, um, now we still have a job to do in our fragment shader, and that is just to output some color here. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing here with our out vector. But this time, we're going to uh, inform what that output color is by our input here. So let's go ahead and modify this now 
to take in a V vertex color. It's a vector, so R uh, value here, V vertex color G, and V vertex color B here. Okay, so it'll look something like that here. And actually, I'll get rid of these spaces because no one usually writes code like that as much in the vertex shaders. <laughs> it's just getting a little bit long here. Um, so um, that's essentially what we have in our uh, vertex shader here. So let's get rid of these spaces just to make it look a little bit nicer. Oops, there we are. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see if this makes a difference here. And again, I don't need to recompile, but I can just rerun uh, our program. All right, so let's see what our result is. And well, we're getting closer. Our triangle did change colors, but uh, it looks like I've forgotten something here. And again, this is where we have to be a little bit careful in understanding the pipeline here. And let me explain before I uh, fix it. Again, in our uh, pipeline here, remember our vertex shader here, the stuff that's coming in from this box, so this is our code here, needs to be coming into our fragment shader in our code over here. Now, what I've actually done here is, well, from my vertex shader, I have uh, specified that I'm sending out these vertex colors here, but I haven't assigned them. So even if they came in, um, you know, whatever the values happen to be, I'm not uh, assigning them here in our fragment shader. So this is something that's uh, kind of common when you're first learning these things here. Uh, but I actually need to say, hey, what are the values or the things that are coming in that uh, into my pipeline here. Um, but from my vertex shader, I want to pass out this information that I'm bringing uh, in here to my vertex shader. OK, so let's go ahead and give that a try. Uh, and now if I rerun it, you'll get a uh, beautiful triangle here with a red, uh, green, and blue point here. And this is pretty cool for a few reasons. One, it's just more interesting to look at, sure. But the real power in this lesson is the ability to add or attach more information to these vertices. And what we're going to find is that other information, like normal information or texture information, is really going to allow us to add more scenes to our graphics programs as we proceed here. So let me go ahead and get rid of this here. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, leave these uh, shaders here just so you can see all the code on one screen and a quick scroll through the actual uh, area where we made some changes here just in our vertex specification to again add this additional uh, attribute here um, generating another vertex buffer object and enabling that attribute and then disabling it here so folks i hope you found that a useful lesson and again this one's kind of fun because we're starting to see some of the power with opengl and some things that we can do in triangles now there's much more to come so make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already if you found this lesson useful go ahead and hit the like button and soon enough i'll see you very soon